on binary pals i saw you <laughs> i saw you freeze i saw the dm guys gals and non-binary pals welcome to bananas i am a a nice boy known as banana boy number two scotty landis i am a nice boy <laughs> known as kurt brown oler and we do have to give a shout out for guys gals and non-binary pals somebody dm'd it to us and they we did. loved it I really appreciate it because I want something that rolls off my tongue. Um, and I we love the non binary bananas. When I did the MTV Awards with Adam Devine, he hosted MTV Movie and TV Awards. We had the first non binary presenter uh, mm-hmm. ever and on MTV, I guess. Uh, maybe it was actually on any. Um, award show at the time. Oh, wow. That's very cool. Uh, And it was cool. And the funniest part was um, the the producers came up to Adam and I and they, Mm -hmm. like, were acting so weird. And we were like, um, we are fine. Uh, It was Asia Kate Dillon, by the way. uh, It was a great moment. And and they did an amazing job. Uh, but they came up to us and they were like, guys, so MTV is wants us to do this new thing. Um, we want to have the first non-binary producer. Are you guys okay with that? And we were like, yeah. And they were like, really? We were like, why would we ever not be okay with that? Like, it was as if yeah. they, it wasn't like, Adam, there's a co-host. There's a co-host and they're getting all the time. It was a presenter. And we were like, Yes, we we support everybody. Get used to it. Yeah, it's no new kidding. World. Get used to it, Scotty. How you been? I've been so good. I've been having just a wonderful time reconnecting with friends. Really, one at a time in people's backyards. I went over Albertina, who's been on the oh, podcast twice. We nice. sat in her backyard, sipped some mezcal, had a nice chat. I'm feeling great. How are you? I'm good. I'm coming off of uh, 10 days of no drinking. It's been very nice. Um, good. Just trying to lose a little weight for the old special. The that's special Reno. In Denver, August 29th. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah At buddy. the Gothic Theater, guys. Come over. I'm going to be maybe one pound lighter than I am now. You're going to see this guy one pound lighter than you're <laughs> listening to him right now. It Which is, is hard to imagine. It is fascinating because I I gained like twenty pounds during the pandemic, of course and you did. just I think a lot of us did. And Absolutely. just try, and now at um, at my age forty five, I'm not going to be shy about my age. I'm a forty five year old dad. You look damn good. Thank you. Some would you say do. I could pass for forty two. Do you know Easy. what I mean? Easy. If I was jogging and I glanced (laughs) briefly to my left, I would be like, who is that studly 42-year-old dad? That's what I, you know, that's what I'm shooting for. And uh, and it is just so much harder to lose weight now. And it just happened this year. It used to be like, if I stopped drinking and like just watched what I ate for like a couple days, (laughs) I would just like lose 10 pounds. And now it is... Uh, it's real, real tough. And I guess that's just, I'm going to accept is. it. I'm going to be okay with it. And it's just yeah. the future uh, for me. But uh, yeah, so it's been good, you know, just been trying I, uh, to. I drop remember some when weight. you would run. Oh, I lost. Yeah, I, I was in a walrus phase last fall, and then I just <laughs> got out of it by not drinking for 90 yeah. days. But I'm back. I'm back off the wagon where I belong. Um, I remember when you used to text me and go, I'm running, are you home? And I would say, yeah. (laughs) And then when you would run by my building, you would scream as loud as you could and then just keep running. Never stop by. (laughs) I always loved it. I would be typing and I would just hear, (laughs) and then I'd be like, there goes Kurt on his daily jog. (laughs) I do. And it would be so cold out. Those were those jogs in New York City where where like you finish and it, tastes like your lungs are bleeding do you know that like that feeling where it was just like it was that cold out that like i don't even know what the hell that is it's probably not good for you but uh, maybe it's great for you who knows anymore maybe it's the best no one knows anything anymore no it's all up in the air everything is up in the air 
You watch so any gravity. piece of the news, you're just like, we do this now. No, we do this now. Nope, we're switching it up. <laughs> this is what we're doing now. And I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I'm going to unfollow people on Twitter and oh, Instagram yeah. who post political and um, and that kind of news. That's like, now it's this, because eventually you just lose all respect for those people and don't want to ever even be their friends anymore. Yep. Agreed. So, over the right. weekend. Yes. I have to tell you this one quick anecdote. All right. So I went to, I found out that Los Angeles has a professional rugby team. I didn't know this. And they're called the Gil Teenies. Because I guess there's this rich guy whose last name's Gil, like Adam Gill. <laughs> I think he's Australian. What? Made the, his money doing. Oh, here's the, what I was told. And then the I don't know. Gil Teenies? But I mean, like, is it a, a riff on something? <laughs> like, is it like Martinis, but Gil Teenies? Like, what? That's right. So the logo is a G, the top of a martini glass. It's a pink logo, and it's a G that turns into a martini. So it is like martinis. Their fans are called the Gil Tiki's. So you wear Hawaiian clothes, tiki shirts and stuff. There's so many levels Um, of confusion right And John Gabris, our good friend and host of the High and Mighty podcast. Perfect person to go with. One of the people we love the most who played... Uh, college rugby at Marist. He's like, Scotty, do you want to go? It's the semifinals. I said, where is it? He said, the Coliseum. For the banana animals that don't know where that is, very famous, former Olympic Stadium, the Coliseum. It's right next to USC, the mm-hmm. big University of Southern California. So we get there, and they're like, let's meet. I'm meeting this really nice guy named Paul, too, who's an Australian. So the three of us are going. And uh, we're like, let's meet at Bandito's. I've been to Bandito's before. It's a Mexican restaurant directly across the street from the Coliseum. Uh-huh. Let's get a couple margaritas, storm in. Bandito's is closed. So Gabris goes, let's go to Rock and Riley's. It's on the other side of USC. It's two miles from where I am. I got a killer parking spot. So I'm not giving this parking spot up. So I'm wearing very short shorts. I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt. I'm wearing wrap-around blender blades. They're like Oakley blade sunglasses, and I'm wearing a bright hat. So I uh-huh. l- look very strange for <laughs> y- this, this area. I see a lime scooter. You and I have lime scooted before. We've scooted around. Who doesn't like to scoot? I mean, I understand why people don't like them. I am yes. the reason people don't like them. Just like, ding, 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 here I come to gentrify <laughs> your neighborhood. But I love it's a lime scooter. True. I really do. Yeah. So I'm I'm at the wrong location. Paul and Gabrus are showing up to this big sports bar that is open. I'm two, two and a half miles away. I go, hey, I'm scooting. Yeah, I'm man. cool. I'm yeah, cool. Dude. So I get on a lime scooter. <laughs> looking looking like a, just a moving luau, a, just a tall <laughs> white luau, just oh, racing through South L.A. So... I look at the, my map on my phone and I like mentally go, oh, okay, so the fastest way to do this is to cut directly through USC's campus Perfect. to the other side, to, to USC Village or whatever. Usually a pleasant ride on a scooter through a college campus. Oh, I on find. a weekend? On a, a weekend? weekend? During the summer? Gorgeous. Empty. Perfect. Me and the, me and the painters. Me and yeah. the, the landscapers. So... I'm gunning it. I'm making killer time. I'm weaving in and out of traffic. I turn into USC campus full speed, and I go about, I don't know, let's say 15 seconds of top speed on one of those things, and then it slows to a stop. And oh, I'm like, right. okay. It's a no so zone. I, it's a it's no, a no zone. zone. Which I didn't know was a thing. Yeah. And now I'm about a mile. So I'm like, well, I'll just I'll turn it off. I'll just turn it off here, and I'll just walk this mile or whatever. <laughs> so... <laughs> So it won't let me turn it off because it's a no parking red zone. Oh, right, because you can't park it. Oh, oh, right, right. Yes. So then I'm like, well, next logical step, I'll just scoot it with the motor off. So I start scooting with my foot, just old school 1980s style, and it breaks on. It's it's breaking. I'm I'm shaking my head because they they have a thing so that you can't steal it. So that if it's not like on, you can't just push it. That's right. I don't know any of these things, so I'm t- and I'm trying to meet my friends in time so we can also make it to the game. So I just start pushing the scooter, and then the scooter just stops. So then I have to carry this scooter for one mile through the middle of campus while families of incoming freshmen are touring the campus. And here comes... This 30-year-old guy Bobby dressed Luau. like that. <laughs> Bobby Luau carrying a scooter that weighs 25 to 45 pounds, oh, God, just walking heavy. through like 
I can't wait to sell your kids LSD. <laughs> I like to party. Where are the freshmen at? And so I just am sweaty, carrying a scooter. Every college kid knows exactly it's a red zone. So they're uh. just like, look at this buffoon. And so I just was like, I'm going to carry this thing and like pretend like I'm looking at my phone. But people in groups were walking by, getting quiet, <laughs> and then talking when they went past me like, look at this sad sack of crap. I loved it. So, Oh, my God. God, I love that story so much. <laughs> it made me so happy, and I just made like 10 mistakes, but it was really my wardrobe ensemble that sold it for everyone. Oh, my goodness. Well, this is crazy. I mean, like, we never we never go this long before getting into a story, but I got to tell a Lime Scooter story. Get in! A, a Lime Scooter adjacent story. I was in Bulgaria recently. Lime Scooters in Bulgaria. Wow, no, so that's surprising. New. It's not even their own v- version of It's just Lime Scooters. And so I'm... Hmm. I'm scooting around, and uh, and you know I'm by myself, so I'm trying to like explore the city. And Bulgaria was like actually yeah. very cool. Was so I was in Sofia, and uh, it's actually a very beautiful in in you know in the center of the city. It's very European. Uh, outside, it's yeah. all like brutalist architecture and everything. Mm-hmm. But right in the middle, it's like oh, you could be in a European you know city. Love and that for Bulgaria. I love for bulgaria and they have all these like <laughs> bars and parks which was so great it's like exactly what i want is to yes. like, just walk into a park and there's an a, a literal bar with no walls <laughs> and Dear you just God. walk up and buy alcohol and then just walk through the park with it and it's like Paradise. that is exactly what every park should have because it makes yes. park walking perfect agree so couldn't agree more having some drinks scooting mm. around and then well, I i'm find having out, fun oh there's mm-hmm. a casino here there's actually Ooh. multiple casinos there. Ooh. But I was like, and they have poker. And I, and I, for the pandemic, was playing poker online with friends, like uh-huh. where they had just little um, video images, squares. Little avatar see, guys. Yes, okay. every, all my buddies from Jersey, like on Saturday night, we would like play poker and I could see them. And really it was just a way to like catch up and chat. But then there was like something going on as opposed to a Zoom where everyone like, you know, those Zoom hangouts during the Great Choir where it's just like, yeah. okay, uh, next, who's next, we'll talk. Yeah, you know, it's how like is your stressful. wife? Is your wife still okay? Very good. <laughs> so it was just like, you know, a way to hang out together. Yes, sir. Anyway, I have never yep. played poker in a casino. And <laughs> it seems terrifying, but I was excited. I'm by myself. I have nothing to do. I yes. go there. And they, like, need your passport. So the first time I went, I was like, I had to go get my passport, came back. They check me in. I become a member of the casino or something. I go in, I'm, and I'm, I <laughs> grab a guy, and I'm like, I want to play poker. How do I do it? And they're like, we'll put you on the list. Mm-hmm. And then I just sit there, and they're like, Mr. Mr. Kurt? And I was like, yes. And they, like, lead me over. So then yes. I sit down. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know what okay. people in the Bulgarian mafia look like. Yeah, me neither. But I'm pretty sure it's them. <laughs> uh, they're all in uh-huh. like matching zip up uh, um, track suits, Adidas track suits. I guessed it. Maybe Big I do gold. know exactly what Bulgarian <laughs> yeah. gangsters look like. Big gold chains and everyone's smoking. Everyone's just constantly smoking. Really? And the woman who's running the game is doing it all in Bulgarian. Mm-hmm. And I have never mm-hmm. played in in public before, so I do, so the speed at which it goes, I was not. Oh, prepared I'd be so for. nervous. The yeah, speed is very that. fast, and I keep no fucking way. up, and I keep fucking up with like like blinds <laughs> and stuff like that. And then this guy to the, my right starts fucking with me a little bit and calling me George. And I was like, sorry, I'm th- I've played online. I haven't played in person. He's like, yeah, yeah, we know, George. And he's like, oh. fucking with me a little bit. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, and I'm like, I'm just not talking. I'm c- trying to That's keep fine. a low profile and yes. just playing. Oh, and then boy. George keeps fucking with me. And then eventually we get to a position where it's me and George. I mean, yeah. I call him George. The guy who keeps calling me George. Yes. And then he does like the thing that like I didn't even think happened in real life poker games. Which was like he pushes all of his chips oh, he in, went all in, and he, he goes, "I'm all you. in." And then I was like, "And I and I knew what I had. I had I had I just had like a, a two pair, but I was okay. like, I'm gonna go all in against this guy, even I if love I lose. That. I love of it. Of course, yeah. Of course, I'm going all in. And so I go all in, and I was like, re- like it was really exciting to push it all in. You know, like push like, all yeah. the money in. It's like because it'd be yeah, so four, stressful. Four and chips with two fingers, just like. <laughs> 
How much is this I went $4 in. (laughs) And and I fucking won. I won $400, like right there. And then I was like, oh, I want to run away right now. I have $400. I want to get out of here now. Uh, but yes. then I like stayed and was like polite and like played like a few hands and lost a little bit. And then I was like, okay, I'm leaving. And they're like, goodbye, George. <laughs> and you're like, thank you so much, gentlemen. Don't rob me in the parking lot. Thank yeah, you I was very like, Don't much rob for me in the parking lot. Don't rob- <laughs> That's Give me great. all your funny looking money and I'm going to scoot home now. And I got on my lime scooter and I scooted right back to my Yeah, hotel. yeah, exactly. Eat crap, turkeys. And then you get on a scooter <laughs> that takes three pushes before it goes really fast. And then... He had a good mustache at the time, so I'm all for it. Exactly. Okay. All right. Let's now we are into in. it. 16 minutes into the podcast, we get to our first story. We are so sorry, everyone. Yes. Toy advertised as kid friendly in Taiwan sings Polish rap about cocaine. Yes. I mean, great. This is great. TaiwanNews.com, tur- written by. It ties it together a little bit. I know. I, we like to have fun. TaiwanNews.com, written by Sophia Yang, sent in by Papa Ja or. Or Pap Paja. We'll go with either one of those. Who knows? But mm-hmm. Sophia Yang, when it comes to writing about kids' toys that rap about cocaine, Number she one. is best in the business. Taipei, Taiwan News. Parents thinking about buying this toddler-friendly <laughs> friendly electric furry cactus that dances and raps in Polish might want to think twice. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, Wait, the toy it's, maker- also a, it's also a cactus? It's a dancing yeah. cactus? Yeah, it's a furry electric dancing cactus that wraps in Polish. <laughs> you know, in Taiwan. The, the toy maker classic. claims <laughs> the toy maker claims the dancing cactus might help stimulate imagination and creativity in children. <laughs> <laughs> While another online baby product site describes it as a good device for toddlers. However, when a Polish mother living in Taichung recently <laughs> Very, they don't want to get too verbose about how well, how, how great a toy it is. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. You just reminded me of a story. I'll, I, okay. I'll, I'll remember this at the end. Um, uh, but when a Polish mother living in Taichung recently visited a location with a baby, she discovered the cactus was actually rapping some pretty explicit lyrics. The woman told uh, another Polish citizen living in Taipei about the incident, and they notified Taiwan News. The mother said the lyrics repeatedly mentioned cocaine and attempting suicide. <laughs> oh, my. G- no. Oh no. my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Cocaine and suicide attempting uh, repeated over and over and over again. It was really shocking, she said. <laughs> yes, yeah, no shit. that is really shocking. <laughs> oh, the mother from Tai Chung recognized the song, which was produced by a Polish rapper named Sipis or Sipis. She made a video of the rapping cactus and shared it to a Polish online forum. She said the 32 centimeter tall toy. So that's two point something centimeters per inch, right? So we'll say it's 16 inches. So pretty big. Pretty big. Uh, we'll say I it's mean, a foot it tall. Can very it rap uh, loudly about suicide. Yeah, it's a furry cactus. You gotta yeah. have fun. Um, is also available at other locations in Taipei and online shopping uh, at Shopee. Who doesn't like shopping at Shopee? Uh, we I all know do. I do. And the toy is available overseas on Amazon. The mother said uh, the song itself is definitely inappropriate to play in front of your children. So there you go. Here's the question, though. If your sure. child doesn't speak Polish, is it inappropriate? Or is it right. really only inappropriate for Polish children? Right? I agree. And it's yeah, probably it's not nice sold melody. in Poland. No, but it does make me want to get my hands on one of these. I but do, yes, I, I do as well. We should I both order did, one. Yeah, we can try to get it. It doesn't have the name of the toy, but I bet if we look up a uh, wrapping furry cactus cocaine, yeah, we'll get we'll get a good Google search out of that. No matter what, we'll bing it up. <laughs> no matter what. Um, did I ever talk about the stinking rose and the music the musician that played there? No, oh, I can't remember. Okay, I don't think so. I don't think I did either. But I'm going to tell it no matter what. So when I first moved to L.A., um, there's a chain called The Stinking Rose. It's a garlic-themed restaurant. I think it's on La Cienega, and there's a kind of a part of L.A. for people who have never been out here where there's like a bunch of big chains in a row. On, it's like restaurant row. Um, and I was out getting drinks with this guy 
Um, and he was like, well, let's get one more. And it was cold in L.A. It was cold for L.A., I should say. It was probably 30 degrees. So we went to the closest bar. The closest bar is the Stinking Rose. It smells so much like garlic. It's insane. You instantly know the rest of your night you're not going to go meet anyone. Uh Um, So we go in the bar, and the bar is packed. And there's a guy playing a piano, and he's singing and playing a piano. He's got a giant snifter with tips in it. There's right. one drunk guy sitting at that piano. It's Classic. like one of those bar-shaped pianos. Yeah, oh, he's just the saddest uh-huh. dude you've ever seen. And so I sit down, and uh, we're talking. The guy's name's Corrado that I'm with. Corrado and I are sitting there hanging out. He's ordering more food, which is hilarious to me because it's all garlic-based. We're having cocktails, and the guy starts singing. The singer at the piano, uh, I'm noticing a drum sound. Uh-huh. A bass drum. Uh-huh. And I look under the piano, and his left foot is playing a kick drum. Like, he's playing the bass. So while he's playing piano, he's drumming with his left foot. Oh, okay, And I'm cool. like, this guy's pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, another song goes by, and he's playing a loungy cover. He's an older guy. He's like late 60s, white dude. Um, he's playing like a cover of some Sinatra stuff. He's taking requests. The drunk guy sitting at the piano is putting like a dollar in after every song. So then he starts playing... Um, Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake, mm-hmm. but he's he's doing his version where he's like, "I'm I'm bringing sexy back. <laughs> you other boys just don't know how to act." Oh, so that's then great. he's right. He's playing the drum, playing the pianos. He bends down and sits up, and he's got a bass guitar around his neck. No. So he's playing the piano with his left hand. He's slapping a bass with his right hand. <laughs> he's singing. He's singing and he's playing the drums. So I'm like, Corrado, you got to look at this. And he, and we're turned around and I'm like, this might be the greatest musician in the history of Los Angeles. Yeah. So another song comes up, and now I'm not leaving until this guy's done his set. Yeah. So he's playing. Um, I think he was playing like an Usher song. And same thing: drum, piano, bass, singing. He gets this part, and I'm like, is he just going to go for this high note? He reaches down, <laughs> picks up a trumpet, and starts soloing on a trumpet with his <laughs> right hand. <laughs> While still playing the piano with the other piano, hand? Piano, fo- left foot ba- left foot drum, left hand piano, right hand trumpet, and then puts it down and goes back to bass and singing. It was the craziest lounge act. So I go home. I'm telling everybody I know about this. I, yeah. I must have told you this nine years ago. So, and I go on the website to prove the point that not only does this man exist, but that he does all these things. And so on the Stinking Roses website, they have a page for this guy, like, like Thursdays and Saturdays, come sing with, I don't remember his name, we'll call him Michael. Yeah. All the reviews are from extremely famous people. Smokey Robinson, Aretha Franklin, Stevie Wonder, just incredible, but none of them give a compliment. They all give the most sideways compliments, like no. they say ambiguous things, like "There's nobody like Michael," <laughs> or oh, no. "Once you've seen Michael, you'll never forget it." <laughs> like they couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't go. Incredible voice, what a talent! It was all just like, if you've been here, you've seen Michael, and I was like. <laughs> And that's what they put on the website. The guy that plays four instruments and sings in At a garlic the same time. bar. Yeah, to one drunk guy and an oversized snifter. Michael, or whatever your real name is, God bless you. I hope you made it through the great choir. Uh, we got to go. You and I got to go one night, oh, wear tuxedos, oh, yeah. and sit at that piano bar. Oh, I'm in. I am so in. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. All right, listen. Let's. right. I'm going to tease us, and then we'll take a Jesus. break, and then we'll come back, all right? Sounds great to um, me. This is not going to be a funny one, but it's a fucking fascinating one. Who cares? I'm Here having it fun is. already. The real Lord of the Flies. What happened mm-hmm. when six boys were shipwrecked for 15 months? Unbelievable. All that and more on a very adventurous Bananas. If you're skeptical, then maybe check the facts. But you better believe it. We're back. Yes, we Banana are. Animals, welcome. Plug some stuff. Listen, guys, if you have a moment, go over to the yes. Apple Podcasts and give we us need a it. review. We need them. 
we're coming up on 6,000. Let's get to 6,000. We have like 5,700. It would be such a treat. We would really appreciate it. What a treat. What a treat. And also just a a reminder, August 11th, I'm going to be in Los Angeles at the Dynasty Typewriter. Great location. Uh, Please come out and see me run my hour before I tape it in Denver, August 29th at the Gothic Theater. Tickets available for all those shows on our Instagram or on my Instagram. We got all new merchandise, Bananimals. It's a free podcast. We love you listening. If you want to support us, we got Best in the Biz shirts, long sleeve, short sleeve, and color changing. You put your hand on it. You can put your partner's hand on your butt. It'll show the handprint. We have color-changing merch. It's so cool. Hoodies are back in. Bottles are back in. Everything's back in. Load up. Look cool. Come say hey. Thanks for everybody who already bought some. And here's Uh, it's time to give a little rest in peace uh to the old, a little RIP to the BP, the Banana Phone. Rest in peace, Banana Phone. The Banana Phone is now officially over. Thank you, Mint What a run we've had. For, I think they took out one or two ads, but they gave us a free phone for a year, and we've not stopped talking about it. Yes, and it was great. And, you know, I, I went back and kind of did a final tally. So we got um, 15,071 different numbers, text messages. So sent text, what? but that's not total text, but that's number of people. So that's 1500, number of people. 1,500. Okay. 71. Um, and I tried to, re- I responded to every single one of them at least. And so some people that text every day towards the end, Kurt, everybody sent pictures of their cats and dogs unprompted. I'm telling you so, so many <laughs> also got a few ding dongs towards the end. Also got some, uh, some breasts toward the end and all of them received a very light lashing saying, this is a family phone. How dare you? <laughs> but lots of cats and dogs. Um, you know, it was fun. Last year was when I was home alone and I was answering the phone all the time because of the great choir, I talked to so many people and I've said this before, but lots of crying people, lots of nurses and doctors, yeah. lots of EMTs, everybody that a lot of first responders. And then this year I felt the change happen in real time where now people are getting married. People are getting jobs. They're graduating college. They're getting into law That's school. Great. It was That's a great. great social experiment. I'm so glad we did it. Um, I would. I regret doing the text messaging at all. Uh, the phone calls were wonderful, and for all the people that said, "Oh my god, I can't believe you picked up," I laughed every time. And for all the people that said, "Oh shit," and hung up because they didn't think I'd really answer, you're kind of my favorite callers of all. <laughs> but the main thing I just want to relay about the banana phone and the fact we might do something similar in the future. Who knows? It was fun to reach out to our fans. Was they're really nice people. And there should be a lot of hope for all our listeners that you're part of a really big, kind community of people. Because for me, our, it was so uplifting how supportive and cool. Everybody's promoting each other, wishing happy birthday to That's each other. Great. Just giving shout outs for their friends, their dads, their moms. It was very uplifting in an unexpected way. I just thought it would be people like telling me bad jokes or screaming in the phone or farting or something and instead it was a lot of really sweet people telling a lot of nice stories so i think it was a total success i love the banana phone rest in peace banana phone r.i.p bp i'm so happy we did it i'm so happy that you took took the overwhelming brunt of it i had it for just i had it for a couple of weeks and it broke me (laughs) yeah it was a lot. And I'll just give the final shout outs or the final banana yes, mails please. off of it. Uh, banana Anna called me from Knoxville. She's a stay at home mom and told me her mother, Shelly, is a big fan of this podcast. So that's a we love our, our golden bananas. We love our yeah. grandmother bananas. Golden bananas. We love our golden bananas here. Uh, so hey to Shelly. And I'm going to hug Karen Kilgariff this weekend for Anna. Uh, Laner Bananer, Kurt. Uh, We got a call. She's a junior high student in North Dakota getting through school. And I just wanted to say, get through school. Get through junior high. Get through high school. There's a beautiful world out there. Yeah, School is weird. And this has been two really weird years. So, Laner, Bananer. Laner, we got your back. Yep. Get out there in the beautiful world. And uh, your aunt is a very cool lady to reference you. And finally, to Marianne in Gainesville, who just called me about 15 minutes ago. Happy friggin' birthday. I hope your parents bought you a ton of expensive wine. At whatever wine bar you went to tonight. And that's it for Banana Mail. R.I.P. Nice. Banana Phone. R.I.P. Banana Phone. Also, just one thing. 
Uh, we, uh, you know, Instagram, go follow us on Instagram, The Bananas Podcast. We answer every single DM that comes we in. We do. But in order to continue to do that as more okay. and more people DM, w- I just ask very kindly to please not send memes or j- or unexpected bananas in a message. Please just put, you can tag sure. us in tag them, us. in your story, and then we'll re restory them. But uh, it, it's just getting too much with just people sending like, I saw this banana. Uh, so please don't message us pictures of bananas or memes. Just send us news stories or your personal stories to the DM. And that way we can continue to answer everybody's DM. Yes. But Perfect. keep them coming. All that but being keep said, them keep them coming. You guys are doing a great job. We love you all. Let's get back into the silliest right, little podcast there ever was. The real Lord of the Flies, what happened when six boys were shipwrecked for 15 months. This is another yeah. classic from Copy Haste. Thank you. Thank you, Copy Haste. This was in The Guardian. This is a real story. This is from uh, written by B-I-T-B, Rutger Bregman. Thank you, Rutger. Uh, Great job, Rutger. Published May 9th, 2020. Here's this whole mm-hmm. story. So, again, this is a Guardian article. It is a fucking really long. I am not going to okay. read all of it. A lot. The first half of the article is, uh, is, is, is Rutger really giving us a lot of information about how he found this story. But here is finally <laughs> uh, what the story actually is. Yes. Um, so Rutger got in touch with uh, the sea captain who rescued these kids in 1966. Okay. Um, and so they got in, he, so the, the author got in touch with the guy who rescued them, and he got in touch with one of the boys. Um, so he literally was, he's a sea captain uh, near, near New Zealand, between New Zealand and Fiji. And okay. uh, he was literally just uh, boating around and then saw all, like, a burn mark on an uninhabited mm-hmm. island. And then all these mm-hmm. boys jumping off the water and swimming out to him. And so then he, like, radioed it in, like, I've got six kids here. And the oh. operator, like, waited. It, like, it was like, stand by, came the response. Yeah. This is quoting, 20 minutes ticked by as Peter tells this part of the story. He gets a little misty-eyed. Finally, yes. a very tearful operator came on the radio and said, you found them. These boys have been given up for dead. Funerals I have been held. If it's them, this is a miracle. Yes. Yeah, so I am I just going to... I know gonna, this story. I this know is this a, story. This is an amazing story. I did, not, I did not know because, you know, the Lord of the Rings was always like, if you put a bunch of boys on an island, they're going to fucking create a monarchy, a dictatorship, and then they're going to yeah. murder a boy. And no. the real story oh, of what happened was so, mm-hmm. so different. Um, so here is the story. The protagonist... Okay. Were six boys, Sion, Stephen, Colo, David, Luke, and Mano, all pupils at a strict Catholic boarding school in nu- Nuku'alofa. The you oldest was 16, the youngest 13, and they had one main thing in common. They were bored witless. We got, we got you guys. Yeah. So they came up with a plan to escape to Fiji, some 500 miles away, or even Smart. all the way to New Zealand. Good plan. Uh, there was only one obstacle. None of them owned a boat because they were children. <laughs> so they yes. decided to borrow one from Mr. Tana- Taniela Uhila, a fisherman they all disliked. The boys took little time to prepare for the voyage. Two sacks of bananas, a few coconuts, and a small gas burner were all the supplies they packed. Mm-hmm. It didn't occur to any of them to bring a map, let alone a compass, of course. No one noticed the small craft leaving the harbor that evening. Skies nah. were fair. Only a mild breeze ruffled the calm sea. Rutger really is best in the biz for writing. A few hours later, yes, they awoke is. to water crashing down over their heads. It was dark. Not fun. They hoisted the sail, which the wind promptly tore to shreds. Next to break was the rudder. We drifted for eight days, Mono told me, without food, without water. The boys tried yeah. catching fish. They managed to collect some rainwater and hollowed out coconut shell- sh- shells and shared it equally between them. Then on the eighth day, they spied a miracle on the horizon. A small island, to be precise, not a tropical paradise with waving palm trees and sandy beaches, Great. but a hulking mass of rock jutting up more than a 1,000 oh. feet out of the ocean. Not so great. These days, Ada is considered uninhabitable, but by the time we arrived, Captain Warner wrote in his memoirs, the boys had set up a small commune with food garden, hollowed out tree trunks to store rainwater, a gymnasium with curious Yeah, they were bodybuilding. Yes. Yes. A badminton court, 
chicken pens, and a permanent fire, all from handiwork, an old knife blade, and much determination. While the boys in Lord of the Flies came to blows over the fire, those in the real-life version tended their flame so it never went out for more than a year. The kids agreed to work in teams of two, drawing up a strict roster for guard and kitchen and guard duty. Sometimes they quarreled, but whenever that happened, they solved it by imposing a timeout. Their days began and ended with song and prayer? Uh, yeah, you gotta fashion. have structure. I know, you gotta, you gotta have, have structure. Colo fashioned a makeshift guitar from a piece of driftwood uh, and played it for that, that 15 months. What a good boy. Uh, all summer long, it hardly rained, driving the boys frantic with thirst. They tried constructing a raft, but it fell, fell apart. Uh, one of the boys, now I'm kind of paraphrasing here, one of the boys slipped and broke his leg, but instead of leaving him, they all like climbed down and like brought him back up, and then they set the leg with sticks uh, and vines. That's cool as hell. Right? Heck um, yeah. They survived on fish, coconuts, tame birds. They drank the blood as well as eating the meat. Seabird eggs were sucked dry. Later, when they got to the top of the island, they found an ancient volcanic crater where people had lived a century before. There, the mm. boys discovered mm, wild mm, taro, mm. bananas, and chickens, which had been reproducing for the hundred years since the last Tongans had Fantastic. left. Fantastic. Isn't that crazy? Mm. I so love they, that. A- after they were rescued, the local physician expressed astonishment at their muscled physiques and Stephen's perfectly healed leg. Okay. Um, so this okay. is the craziest part, right? Yes, sir. Paraphrasing here to wrap it all up for this story. Wrap it up tight. We love this story. I think my favorite murder did this story, by the way. I, I'm oh, on, really? When you've said their names, I remember Karen. I think Karen did this one. But hey, hey, there's a lot of wild stories out there. A lot of wild stories. Our apologies if, you, if this is all bullshit to you and you've heard it all before. Nah, they like it. They like it. So they, uh, so they came back. They're putting okay. into the harbor. They're rescued. They get off the boat. They're rescued. They yes, are sir. immediately arrested because <laughs> welcome home, Mister Tanila <laughs> Aluha was still mad that they stole his boat, so he pressed charges. Love so that. Then the guy who rescued what a grudge. them went in, paid their bail, got them out, and then gave them all jobs as crew on his boat. Yes, they and were like so friends then, forever, right? They were friends they were forever. Like, Yes, oh, and then so also, because nice. basically, they went to the king of the island, you know, the, the, the captain, and the king said, like, well, what do you want? You brought these six boys back to us. You can have anything. And he said, oh, I want the right to, uh, you know, fish for lobster off your waters. And he's like, yeah, you yeah. got it. And so he oh. bought a big boat, and then he hired all the oh, boys yeah. that he had rescued, and then they were a crew for years and years and years. Oh. And he was like a father figure to all of them. So cool. That's so crazy. Uh, yeah, this story, I, I mean, how isn't that a TV series? That feels like a series right? for sure. Right. I watched that. I also, it's too. like you think it's kind of like what you said with Lord of the Flies. It's like people always assume if it was a bunch of dudes together on an island, they would just become like Neanderthals and kill each other. But yeah. it's like these guys work together. They sung songs. I think I remember a detail from that article where it was. It's like when they would get in arguments, they would like separate them to opposite sides until they cooled down and they would come back. There's, yeah. We can all work together, guys. I love that so I much. I love the story so much, and I've been obsessed with this show alone that Scotty turned me on to. And Great I show. Do, and I do think like when you're in like a survival situation, the last thing you want to do is fight another human because nature is so terrifying itself. You want to actually like unite together with other people who can speak yes. your language. I think I love Alone. I, I really love, love that show. Love no so spoilers. Good. but I Everybody think... go watch Alone. It's on Netflix. It's amazing. Start, Start with, with the most recent season. Epi- yeah, season. Yeah, just keep going. But I think, and this, I don't know how bad this throws it off here. This is totally unfair. I think the women are better at alone. Yeah. I think they have the advantage or the disadvantage of uh, weight Less loss. Body and I fat. feel like the yeah. women that are on it should get one month head start to beef up. I think they should get to get one month just to pack on as much fat as they can because I think they would like even the playing field because mentally they are good. They're well, like, they kick. But it's I amazing. know we were talking about this and the fact that like it does seem like on, you know, it's it's always difficult when you're making any pronouncement on basis of like big, big, you know, structures like gender or something like that. But the women have the ability to cry 
and just like then move on, like release that yes. moment. Like the moment is experienced. It washes yes. over them. They give themselves to it. They don't fight it. And it seems like they're going to tap out. But yes. then they don't. And then they're just like, okay, now I, I got that out of my system. Now it's time to move on and do the thing. Whereas, like, the dudes hold yes. it all in and then just start, like, la, 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 and have, like, a heart attack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a great show. Gosh. Ugh. I remember when Survivor came out and everybody was like, you go to an island, you have to eat bugs, and you're allowed to take one thing. And I was working in a greenhouse and I was working with basically all strangers. And there was an older lady there who had been like cutting poinsettias for years. And she's like, Scotty, what would you take to the island? And I was like, oh, I would take my mom. And they all started <laughs> laughing. And then they all liked me. And it was like, that was my joke to get in. Survivor <laughs> joke, my one item would be my mom. <laughs> and uh, I stand by that one, too. <laughs> I love that. So, you know, I mean, like when I was 22, uh, you know, I decided to go do my version of this which was live in the woods by myself for a month yeah after i graduated college and i was like i gotta go learn how to be alone and so uh my buddy owned uh like a, my old english teacher owned 40 acres up in upstate new york and so i went up there with my tent uh -huh. had it had maybe done one weekend of camping before this and then decided to live in the woods by myself building my own structure yes uh, and of course, I didn't. I didn't like feed myself off the land. I just ate tuna fish naked out of a can. Um, but you were naked. I was naked. And the tuna a lot. fish was naked. And okay. the tuna fish Both. was naked. Um, but it it is fascinating. What the happens to you first, when you're alone? Right. I mean, yes, the very first night because I chose a. Um, I had a choice between a an electric lantern, which of course would have been very easy, and a propane lantern. And for some reason, I, I thought it was like more woodsy or cooler to have a propane lantern. And uh -huh. the thing about a propane lantern when you're alone in the woods is it makes this insane sucking noise, like oh, sure. the whole time. <laughs> so if it's behind you, you literally can't hear anything behind you. You just hear the <laughs> sucking noise. <laughs> And that's what freak. That's the thing that freaked me out. So it was like yeah. it got dark. Or I had my fire going, and then I was like, I have to just get right into bed and go to sleep right now because I am sure. fucking terrified. Absolutely, um, not of animals, of just of humans. You know, yeah, of your own imagination. That's exactly. what we're all afraid of. You're not afraid of anything. But it is very, very difficult to be alone, and I. I do not begrudge. When anyone taps out, I'm like, good for you. Get out of there. You should yeah. tap out. There's no reason for you to do this. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, I totally agree. There comes that point, And the older you get, the, that, the faster that point comes. When you're a young yeah. person like you were, when you're like 21, you're just like, I can do anything. And then when you get old enough, you go, but why would I want to? And then yeah. you go home and enjoy yourself. You eat a exactly. nice meal. <laughs> oh, bud. I love right. that. Those kids a, are give awesome. Give me another story. Oh, let's do... Well, I can kind of do one along that line. Okay. Oh, no. This one a lot of people sent in. We haven't done this yet. All right. Uh, cops break up exorcism of dead trees at Pennsylvania Home Depot. Oh, yeah. This is... A, we've got this from almost every banana, I believe. Right. So there was an exorcism in aisles at a Home Depot. This You guys sent this in about two months ago, and sometimes we get so many people that you kind of copy and paste, and we try to get them ready for everybody. Uh, Newsweek.com, written by Emma Mayer. Thank you, Emma Mayer. You're a great writer. Um, nobody writes about exorcisms in hardware stores quite like Emma, best in the business, Oscar Mayer. We love her. <laughs> Sent in by Brittany Medovich and Raj Halder. Raj is my good buddy. Raj wrote the kids' Raj. book. Uh, so is Brittany, actually. Uh, Raj wrote P is for Pterodactyl. If any of you have kids and you have the kids' book P is for Pterodactyl, I don't know. Bananimal Raj Halder wrote that book. I gotta get book. that book. It's so damn good. Oh, good. So, uh, you've seen exorcisms take place in movies and TV shows, Kurt. Sure. I sure have. <laughs> Absolutely, we have. But have you ever seen one in the lumber aisle of Home Depot? <laughs> no, I have not. No, none of us have. But police in Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania have. They received a bizarre call on Monday that, quote, disorderly people, end quote, were performing a exorcism for the dead trees. I mean, yeah. 
this is so good. <laughs> it was like boredom. Maybe the episode for this theme is severe boredom leads yes. to great things. Um, so they were at a Home Depot in Dixon City, Pennsylvania. They, uh, quote, they were escorted out of the building, end quote. The report ended. One officer of Dixon County Cops told Philly Voice that it was a seance type of thing for the dead. (laughs) It was a seance (laughs) type of thing. (laughs) You know, for the dead. Uh, And there were two people hanging out in the lumber department doing their little exorcism thing. Some people at the store started picking up that something weird was happening and was not necessarily normal. So the police were called to the store and they were peacefully escorted out of the building. (laughs) Oh, man, these two. Uh, The individuals in question will not be charged. I mean, I assume they didn't really do anything but just some some basic exorcism stuff. You know, I mean, like, yeah, what would what would they be charged for? Getting just acting weird. Wood. Yeah. It'd be in weirdos. I guess loitering. Why does it have to happen there? Did someone die in the home? depot or was it for the lumber was there it any... was for the dead trees that's oh. what they were they were trying to exercise the dead trees uh, you know well, right. i've never been to lackawanna county pennsylvania um it's probably a good thing i've never been there but who knows <laughs> um but yeah the individuals are not going to be questioned it was posted on the police blotter and on facebook it happened at three twenty six p.m which is a good afternoon good time to yeah. exercise some yeah Got two by four. Exercise some exorcism. (laughs) Yeah. Exercise your right to exorcisms. Um, There's no indication the incident was triggered by the skyrocketing lumber prices. (laughs) (laughs) Nice way to tie it in. (laughs) Tie it into global trends. Yeah, that's right. Good job up there, Emily Mayer, I believe. Emma, Emma Mayer. God, Emma she Mayer. ties it all together. It wasn't triggered by the skyrocketing lumber prices, although with the market crash and the exorcism, it has been a busy year in the lumber market. Good to know. <laughs> I like this, though. These are just locals goofing off, and they didn't hurt anybody. Like no, I, I'm all, all for all. that. I'm, I'm all for it, too. You know what? Uh, oh, you got a story for this? Or, no, I can hop I mean, right into another story. Because since we're it. so behind on stories, does that sound good? Sounds great. I love All having right. fun. Here we go. Are you ready for it? Hit me, homeboy. This was sent in by Sarah Fleming Lovely. Uh, thank you, She Sarah. is lovely. Sarah is it, lovely. It is. And this is on the BBC News. Uh, That's real. Written by... Nobody, mm. apparently. They do just, that sometimes. Just Media missed in the biz. Uh, man's static jacket sparks alert. This is, I'm, re- I'm a big fan of this one. Here we they go. They are good at wordplay, those Brits. We love those British bananimals. An Australian man built up so much static electricity <laughs> in his clothes as he walked that he burned carpets, melted plastic, and sparked a mass evacuation. (laughs) (laughs) This is amazing. Frank Kluwer of the western Victoria city of, here we go, Warnambool, was wearing a synthetic Mm. nylon jacket and a woolen shirt when he went for a (laughs) job. As he walked into the building, the carpet ignited from the 40,000 volts of static electricity that had built up. (laughs) It sounded almost like a firecracker or something like that, he said. I bet it did. Within about five minutes, the carpet started to erupt, he told Australian Radio. Holy smokes. Perplexed firemen evacuated the building and cut its electricity supply, thinking the burns could have been caused by a power surge. Quote, there were several scorch marks in the carpet, and we could hear a cracking noise, a bit like a whip, both inside and outside the building, (laughs) said fire official Henry Barton. Mr. Kluwer said that uh, after leaving the building, he scorched a piece of plastic in his car. Oh, my God. His clothes were measured by firemen as carrying an electrical charge of 40,000 volts. The Reuters news agency quoted Mr. Barton as saying the fire official added that the charge was close to being high enough to cause the items to spontaneously combust. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. That, yeah. that must be how it happens. That must right? be how spontaneous combustion happens. It's not yeah. just when a pretty girl walks by and you squirt <laughs> mustard on your hot dog and you squeeze it too hard and then whoosh, you're on fire. It's 40,000 volts of nylon <laughs> tracksuit jacket. Just 40,000 volts. 40,000. That's You could 
you could power a Nissan Leaf with that <laughs> if you touched it properly. That's Ooh, my Nissan wow. Leaf is as that is forty thousand volts. <laughs> wow. I have been firefighting for over 35 years, and I've never come across anything like this, he said. Short and sweet. Pretty amazing. Great one. I love, I love that, that story. I do love I wonder that if you could harness that. Like, I wonder if there's going to be furniture that lights up in the future that uses your bodies, like your swinging arms and Ooh. your walking legs, and like generates enough of a charge... Uh, like the brakes on an electric car yeah. where you can have like light up clothes that say banana oh. boys across your satin jacket. That's what that, I'm really going for. That would be awesome because they have watches. Yeah. They have watches that are powered by just like your movement, you know? Yeah. Yes. That's a really smart idea. I like that idea. Well, yeah. I've never been electrocuted. Have you ever been electrocuted? Yes. I definitely haven't. Yes. Well, uh, at I, a horse I take farm. that back. Yeah, oh, horse really? farm. Yeah, <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. of course. Of course, I was like were. a kid, and uh, and I was just like horses, and just grabbed the thing, and then oh. just like boom, hit the ground. You know what? Yes, I have touched an electric fence, and there was a brief time where we would put those dog collars around our arms and jump over the line, and whoever the nodes were touching oh, would I get shocked. It. I hate it. Yeah. so much. it's such the wor- yeah. it's the worst. We did feeling. do that. It's that such a so terrible tough. feeling. I hate it yeah. so much. Wow. Um, yeah, pretty crazy, right? And also, absolutely. I've, I found a place. I found a place for Banana Uh-oh. Land, I think. You found East Banana Land? I think I found East Banana Land. Let's buy it. Carly, our Suprema lawyer from Chicago, she gave me a call. To, oh, East Banana Land to the Bananimals. We'll do this on next episode, too. It's moving forward. We're looking for land. We're looking yeah. for houses. Uh, we figured out how to do it, so there will be an East Banana Land in the future. This is expensive... But maybe we could raise money with banana, and, and all of us collectively own it. This was th- sent in by Whitney Thornton Faulkner. Um, this is sounds like an author. Post. I know, right? Sounds like a pilot. Good name. <laughs> uh, this is written by Mary Kay Jacob uh, in the New York Post. Haunted Damn, Village cool. on sale for one hundred and seventy-three thousand. Has private beach and seventeenth-century ruins. Oh, that's actually. That's not the worst price I've ever heard. I thought you were going to say a million. 173? No. 173,000. Mm. It's an entire mm. vill- village in Scotland on a oh. lock. Has its Ooh. own beach and these like ruins from 17th century that are supposed to be haunted Damn. by a ghost named I love a like ghost. A specific woman who used to live there. It's gorgeous too. Um who like pr- she predicted a lot of stuff. Yeah, um, I bet she did. She predicted a lot of stuff. And I then bet she died did. Crazy. Where is it? Uh, lo- 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 lawyers. The located in a town called Lawyers. L A W E R S. Okay. Which six lawns the shore <laughs> of the Loch Tay in Perth and Kinross village is said to be home of the ghost of the Lady of Lawyers. Oh. 17th century and fortune teller. She was a fortune teller from the 17th century. That's pretty good. That, right? I'll have to look into that. We're getting close. Carly is going to send some properties. I told her it'd be fun if it was drivable from California. From, yeah, from California. It would be nice. If I will say, if any bananas out there inherited a piece of property or want to sell Kurt and I, I don't know, four acres, like, Give us a DM. If you have a yeah. some property or house or something that you're looking to get rid of, you had a you had a failed experiment to build a yurt life and it now you like to be a yuppie again, let us know. We're getting really close to buying something and uh when we do buy banana land and get that set up, we'll probably do a call. Y'all can save your money, but if you're skilled, if you could say sculpt yeah. two giant bananas or I don't know. Wood. Maybe you're good at wood carving. Maybe you can make the big sign we put over the driveway that says "Welcome to East Banana Land." We're going to put out a call eventually, so get your noggins thinking. It would be nice, um, maybe, if it was in the desert, like in Joshua Tree or something. That yeah. would be because land's cheap out there still. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think we're going to do this sooner than later. As long as there's water and electric, we'll get set up. Uh, Aaron Erdman, Paige Roasting in Champaign, Illinois, the toast to the country, Champaign, Illinois. I was I was talking to her about having a remote location of Page Coffee, Page Roasting on East Banana Land, where when you show up, if you're camping on East Banana Land, make coffee for the next guy. Kurt and I have had to do that on his birthday camping trips before. It's very yep. fun to do. It is very fun to do. Also, uh, you know, Scotty had said that before, talking about Page Roasting. Uh, yes. 
Oh, he said uh, he just he, off Illinois. the top of his head said Champaign, Illinois, toast of the country. Mm-hmm. And uh, Aaron Erdman, who lives in Champaign, has contacted the town council, the mayor, the city the council, the council, mayor. Yeah. And they are considering adopting Toast of the Country as the official uh, Champaign, Illinois slogan, uh, slogan, motto, which is pretty yeah. exciting. Scotty is a wizard of words. Well, if you live in the Champaign, Illinois area and you feel like writing a postcard or supporting Aaron and writing your mayor or your local congressperson say we should have a toast to the country, Champaign, Illinois, on our signs, go for it. Please, we support that kind of mail and effort. 100%. And uh, we would lo- Kurt and I will show up for that if that becomes oh, yeah. official. We'll bring our oh, own yeah. ribbon and do our own ribbon cutting ceremony even I'll if hold they don't want to do you one. You cut it. We'll, yeah. All we need is giant scissors. <laughs> I'll do we it just do for that. the giant scissors. We can do that. Scotty, oh, give us man. one one title to get us out of here. Okay. I will give you one title, and I know what, it, what it's going to be, and I'm scrolling for it because it's a real cutie patootie, as the shamed Rosie O'Donnell used to say. Um, and I say title. Here. You know I mean headline. You know I mean headline. I call them titles. I'm stuck. Okay, Chris Murphy wrote this. Mr. No Shoulder sent it in from the New York Post. If spiders worked together, they could eat all humans in <laughs> one year. <laughs> now that is a headline oh, to go out on. Why I don't we start the next so solo much. episode with that one? We'll go through Please the story do. next time around. That's so great. Um, Scotty, thank you so much, buddy. Thank you, buddy boy, Curdy B. Go see all his shows, guys. I'll see you in Denver. Katie Levine, our wonderful producer engineer, thank you so much. And our wonderful intern, Lisa Maggot, who goes above and beyond all the time. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you, Katie. Thank- and thank you, our benevolent overlords, Karen and Georgia of Exactly Right. Banana. Banana. Uh-huh. This has been an Exactly Right production. Produced and engineered by Katie Levine. Theme music by Kahan. And all of our artwork is done by Travis Millard. You can follow us on Instagram at The Bananas Podcast, where we post stories every day and things that we don't cover on the podcast. Listen, subscribe, and please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast. And if you're interested in advertising on Bananas, please email us at thebananaspodcast at gmail.com. That's thebananaspodcast at gmail.com.